Ohio Congresswoman Marsha Fudge and former North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp are frontrunners to be Joe Biden's agricultural chief. And since the USDA provides aid for the hungry and overseas food production, the pick is especially crucial during a pandemic. People's Action joins more than a dozen progressive groups in publicly opposing the appointment of Heitkamp and endorsing mm. Fudge, who the group claims has, quote, gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with corporations in contrast, again, to Heidi Heitkamp. Director of People's Action, George Gale, joins us now to discuss. Always great to see you, George. Good to see you, George. Good morning. Mm -hmm. um, so lay out why this position matters, first of all, and what the differences are between these two candidates in your view. Yeah, I think it maybe matters more than ever because, as you said, we're in a pandemic. Um, the USDA, really, we think of it sometimes as a rural agency, but first and foremost, it's a food policy agency. And in a pandemic where you've had millions of people lose their jobs, you've got record food lines, both in urban and rural communities, like food policy is going to be critical. 65% of the USDA budget is SNAP, basically food stamps. And Marsha Fudge is like a longtime advocate. She's an expert on food stamps, a fighter for expanding the SNAP program. And so that's the kind of leadership we'd like to see in that program coming out of here. And then I think on the other end, you've got Hyde Camp, whose donor list in many ways is a who's who of the exact corporations that are ruining America, whether it's big tech, uh, big banks or big pharma. And so I think you've got a really clear choice about somebody who's going to fight for everyday people or somebody who's going to fight for big ag. So can you explain that a little bit more, uh, George, which is the importance of USDA, the food stamp program, what the USDA, I think, commissioner has to say about all of that, the impact on environmental regulations, meat regulations, all of that, because it's such an important agency, which is not a lot of people don't know that much about. No, it's true. And even progressives don't tend to yeah. track what's happening with the USDA. So I think there's incredible potential, certainly in protecting, expanding and improving the way we do the SNAP program. And I think for most Americans and most people impacted by the USDA, that's going to be issue number one. And the USDA is the lead agency in, in terms of driving and setting agricultural policy. And our agricultural policy is really like an epitome of a neoliberal uh, agricultural policy. And if you talk to, to farmers that have been in it for a long time, family farmers, they'd say we need to go back to much of what happened in the New Deal programs. We set a fair price for farmers. They, farmers could get a living wage and a fair enough price that it wasn't easy for corporate ag to come in and snap up all these these farm, family farms and take them into their control where they're able to de develop tight enough margins to win. And so what you've seen in so many rural communities is smaller farmers going out of business. And, you know, we've talked about Heidkamp now because Heidkamp's gotten attacked about her strong ties to corporate ag. Vilsack has emerged as now a potential uh, cabinet pick for USDA. And I think this is this is exactly the wrong direction. I feel like what you're seeing is the Democratic Party policy of rewarding failing up. If you fail to govern and you fail to win elections, there's a chance that you're on the exact right path to power in the Democratic Party. Well, there's kind of a contradiction here that you're sort of uniquely poised to delve into, which is You've seen the research, you've talked to people across the country in rural communities, and there is massive agreement that corporate America has too much power in Washington. And monopoly and the problems of our lack of antitrust enforcement, there is nowhere in America where that is felt more directly in day-to-day -day life than in rural America. And yet you tend to have these representatives and these centers, I'm even thinking about Manchin, I'm thinking about Heitkamp and others, who are representing these areas who are deeply tied and in bed with corporate America. Why does that keep happening? I mean, they tend to be some, I mean, look, many people in the Democratic Party are corrupt in this way, but they tend to be some of the worst offenders. Why is that? I think they're both corrupt. And then I think what you're pointing out is why a lot of folks in rural communities are like Democrats, Republicans, what's the difference? They're both on the dole of corporate America. Um, and then I think what really concerns me is I think you've got a lot of folks in the party that actually believe in a neoliberal trickle down policy. And they, so they're not only like hooked on the money, they actually believe the policy at the end of the day. And I think this is why we have this big struggle for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party and right now, I think what you're seeing is a party that in many ways is saying we are going to drive on inclusion and we're going to help include more people in a sinking ship versus address the real reasons that the ship is sinking in rural communities and across the country. Yeah. Well, what other outlet, what other agencies and appointments and things do you have your eye on there, George, in terms of Joe Biden? 
Well, we definitely think Rahm Emanuel is a non-starter for Secretary of Transportation. I mean, talk about a, another example of somebody failing up. I live in, in the Chicago area, and you're talking about somebody who covered up the Laquan McDonald shooting, and then even when acknowledged it and released the video, kind of cast it as one bad apple versus like systemic problems in the police department, shut down mental health centers. And then in the Obama administration, I really think his leadership and strategic guidance is why so many people felt left down by the de by the Democratic Party and by the Obama, sorry, the Obama administration. And so that is one we're, we're definitely watching and keeping an eye on. We'll also keep an eye on, on HUD. We feel solid about the HHS pick. But personnel is policy, and this is the key fight right now. Um, I'll just say this, under the Clinton administration, People's Action ran big campaigns. Secretary Cuomo was the head of HUD then, and we won major things there. It was a fight, but you can win real things from this department, even in a scenario where we're not able to pass legislation. George, so important to have your perspective. Thank you, as always. Thank you, George. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Next, we're going to talk about the troubles that renters are facing as this year comes to a close. That's when rising continues.